Voices of yesterday, today and tomorrow. This is one scripture I want to give to you. Let's go for it. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. My brother, my sister, my, my challenge to you is about your past. What voices is speaking to you from your past? Because if there's hurts, if there are hurts, there's a lot of voices that can speak to me about that hurt. And out of that voices, you can accept the voices and Based on that, you can bring some bitterness and forgiveness and a lot of things into your life. But in the center of the past could be a voice of somebody that said, you're going to be a failure, you're never going to make it. A lot of things that people said, and you can take that voice and bring it into today. And you will formulate today based on that voice. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow his voice must be in the center of yesterday. His voice is supposed to be in the center. You can have success today based on the voice of somebody who said, you will never make it. There will always be lack. There will not be enough for your children. And based on those voices from the past, you're building a business today and it does not really work. Why? Because it's based on voices that's not from God. And you can pray, you can stand in faith, you can confess everything right for your future, for that what must happen. And you are accurate in what you're saying, accurate in your faith, accurate in what you confess about your future. But in the foundation, you're supposed to hear Holy Spirit saying to you, you are building this thing, you are building this business on voices. That's not me. That's not coming from me. But you know, we don't know the voices of our past that so easily, even in our subconscious, conscious, that's speaking to me, that's influencing that what I am and how I do my life, even how I do my life with God. May God help you, may God help me. The voices from the past speaking to you, Holy Spirit will show you. Let's go for it. Judgment, temptation, her disappointment. And then from that place, bitterness, unforgiveness, di discouragement. Because what? That voice is, he's going to do that again. You must protect yourself. You're going to get hurt again. You're going to get hurt again when you come close to somebody. That person disappointed you 50 times already. How many times did me and you disappoint God in the sense of that wrong to him and still he believe in us, still he is excited about our future, still he dreams about us, he dream about tomorrow that can be great, you and him. You want to have his heart, you want to hear his voice, start to think the way he thinks. And if you want to come to know his voice, here is his voice, here is his voice, my brother, my sister. Come to know his voice. And if you know the way that he talks, that means the word. The way that your father is speaking. The way that your hero, your savior, your, your king, your master, your role model. The way that he is speaking. This is the way that he's speaking. Come to know the word and then you will be able to distinguish. That's the voice of my God. That's the voice of my God. I can recognize the voice. Because the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. And you know that stupid sheep out there. I'm talking about four-legged sheep. They didn't go on some other course to learn how to hear the voice of the shepherd. Or, or the little lamb how to hear the voice of the mother. It was in them. In you. You have the capacity to hear the voice of your master. The one who created you. But the challenge is to distinguish between all the other voices. And to distinguish is you know the language. You know the language. You learn Chinese and suddenly it's not like hang hang chang chang chong chang chang hang chang. Suddenly, among 40 languages being spoken, suddenly you hear somebody that you can understand. You know some of these guys, Afri Afrikaans and English guys, but more the Afrikaans guys. In England and Canada and Australia, and they're on the bus, and suddenly 
Hey, there's somebody I, I hear I can recognize because that there's somebody there speaking Afrikaans also. Hello. And so he's supposed to be, yes, I can hear my God's voice because I know his word. I came to know the language. I know the language. I know the way that he would speak. And what is the type of things he would say? You with me? Because somebody can speak the word. The devil came with the word to Jesus. For it is written. For it is written. For it is written. So he can, he can speak the word. But you need to hear beyond, beyond that. But we get to that later. Okay, let's go. Jesus Christ and his voice is central to your past. Central to your past. Because I need to deal with my past. I need to get, o- get over the past. I need to deal with that hurt. Otherwise, I will cherish that hurt. Otherwise, that hurt will have a voice in me. That fear will have a voice. That negativity will have a voice. And it will create more voices. And you will make room for more voices. And the room of this hurt in your life, in your heart, will be bigger because there's more hojas. There's more uh, demons that can come and speak to you. That will justify your reaction. When you walk in the flesh with certain things, there's more and more And more demons that can justify your fleshly reaction. I have an issue with Emil. Uh, Just an example. If I would have had an issue with Emil, and I keep the issue, I will see more and more and more and more reason why I must have an issue. Because of more and more things that I see he's doing wrong. That's the way. Because there's more demons coming down for this party. We can have a party with Cornelius, you know. Well, that pastor, we can have a party, man. Because he's speaking our language. In the way that he speaks about Emil. He's not speaking the way God is speaking about Emil. (laughs) He's speaking our language. We can have some fellowship. The Bible says don't have fellowship with demons. He's speaking to the church when he says that. I'm speaking to the Satanist. Speaking to the church that you can have nice fellowship with demons. You knight the cat in the in the dark, but it's die in an angels. You don't have something like that. Um, you what? No, that is bad. That is really bad. Okay, uh, step over the line. You you whatever. You're doing some fleshly things in the dark. Okay. The enemy is very impressed. But there's more and more that will come to the party. God must help you. God must help me. That we will deal with the weaknesses, with the things of the past, the shame that you could have. No, no. God's going to set you free. But you know, voices. When God speaks, when God speaks, you are set free. Not, but we want to put God's voice there and say, when God is speaking, I put the impact of his voice on my life, I put it there. And only if I understand what he is saying, then I take it. And now I am free because I understand it. It's not if you understand, you evaluated God and now you understand what he is doing. Therefore, you take his word and now you set free. You're not there to evaluate God. But if you can believe, when God opens his mouth, freedom is there. When you allow him to speak, when you distinguish his voice and you honor his voice and you draw it closer to you, when he opens his mouth, freedom is there. Because when he opens his mouth, truth is coming. There's not a lie. There's not untruth coming from his mouth. And truth sets you free. And if me and you are not deceived anymore to think, I must first understand what he is saying and what he is doing. He must first prove to me through what he is saying. Until I understand and in my understanding actually sometimes 
before I will agree. Who am I? Who are you? To have a prerequisite to God. And only if I understand, I will agree with him. That's arrogance, eh? But if you come to know his voice, that his voice is precious in you. That his voice about your past, his voice about today, his voice about your, your future. If it's like you know that when God is speaking into my past, speaking into my present, speaking to this freedom. I'm free from the past. I have freedom to live today and honor him. I have a freedom laying ahead of me in my future, in my destiny. Because I take his word as the truth. When he opens his mouth, if I understand or if I don't understand, doesn't matter. I know when my father is opening his mouth, I'm set free. There's freedom. Because it's truth. And the truth will set you free. Sometimes my emotions and my intellect don't like it because sometimes he's disciplined, but the Lord disciplines only the one that he loves, only the one he accepts as true Genuine children of God. Fake Christians. He doesn't bring discipline because he's not a true child of God. So if there's no discipline on your life, do you see yourself as a fake Christian? Okay, stay fake. But if you believe you are a true uh, Christian, make sure you are in discipleship. Go and make disciples. First of all, be discipled. You have no right to make a disciple if you are not first under authority to be discipled. Where somebody can speak into your life, you will not give yourself a holy whip, the holy whip, uh, tantrum, and there you go, because you don't like what he said, no, there's not such a thing, may God help you, may God help you, amen, okay, there we go, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past, see, I am doing a new thing, now it springs up, do you not perceive it, I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the Desert somewhere. You can see desert somewhere there. Hey, I believe it's there. Can you see it there? Nobody. You can write there. It's Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. Now, what is God saying? You better forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. How do you forget? Make as if it never happened. Oh, no, you no, no, no. You deal with it through the blood of Christ. Hello? But if you've dealt with the past, you need to forget it now. You need to get over it. You need to forget it and understand it's a new day. Why? Because you honor God that he is going to do something new. And if he said so, why you dis decide that you will not believe him? You will disagree. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Oh, I look at a person and I can dwell on my experience with that person. And I formulate a certain opinion about it. Only me, not you, but I'm just using me as an example. Uh, how do you see certain, just bring people that you had good relationship with, bad relationship, those who disappoint you, those who hurt you, those who said bad things about you. Just bring them the one after the other one. See if your heart is clean, just put those faces there and see what your heart is doing. Do you think your heart, you are hard, your heart is clean. You are free if you can think what God is thinking about that person. You are not free. You are the sucker. You are the, what do you mean? You are the one. You are the fool. If you put those people there and you have to, you know, when you think about the different people. You are the one confused and you are the one that's living like a fool. Don't be like a fool. Oh, man. Be set free. In Jesus' name, amen. Forget the former thing. See, God is commanding you to see. But you will not be able to see what God is doing. You will not see the new if you don't first get rid of the past and don't dwell on the past and don't think about the things of the past, first of all. Amen. And it's our Father's own church that you are in. You are so welcome here. May you have an awesome uh, service further. Great. <laughs>
Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? God is saying, can you not see it? Why can you not see it? Do you not perceive it? God is asking you that question. God is challenging you. Why can you not see that I'm doing a new thing? It's only if I cling to the past. Only if I dwell on the things of the past. When you look at yourself, when you think about your life, you think about your marriage, you think about family, you think about people that you work with, you think about people in the church. <sighs> dwell on the past. You will not perceive what God is doing. It's impossible. I am making a way in the wilderness, streams in the wasteland. Way in the wilderness, streams in the wasteland. God didn't say there will not be a wasteland. God didn't say you will not go through a desert. You will go through a desert. You will go through the wilderness. You will go through a place where you don't know how to get to the other side. You will go into a place where like people in the desert, every, oh, where's my English today? Every, Elke Dune, Elke, Sand Dune, every Dune, um, and they all look the same. Where's the road? No, you are doomed in the, with every dune to get, to get lost and to be dehydrated and die. You have an awesome destiny to go and die in the desert. But God said, it's not pray the wilderness away, pray the wasteland away. God didn't say pray for that. He said, pray for the stream, pray for the way, that you will know the way. That you will know the way. Because in, in the way through the desert, my brother, my sister, on the way, they had to get the revelation that was a prerequisite to enter Canaan. Canaan to be the hell of a curse in your life. The promises of God to be the curse in your life. If you don't get the revelation in the desert, before they crossed the Jordan, they had to have the full revelation that with my God, we can face every challenge. We can face a giant. We can face anything. Because, and that revelation was alive in them, not after Jericho and the miracles happened. That revelation was part of a generation, a Joshua generation. Hello? That was part of their lives before they entered. And because it was there before they crossed the Jordan, they could inherit and take possession of the land. There's an inheritance without you taking possession of it. And one day in heaven we could hear, wow, what God so intensely had prepared for you, for those who love him. You can love him and still totally miss it. Standing in your inheritance, but not taking possession of it. It all depends on the way, on the way in the wilderness and the stream in the wasteland. In that place, you need to understand the revelation. The voice, the voice of God in the wilderness. The voice of God in the wilderness. I've heard about a man in the Bible who was like a voice in the wilderness. His name was... John the Baptist, he paved the way in the wilderness for the people to see the Lamb of God. There is the Lamb. There is the Lamb. I'm not worthy. There's the Lamb. I must become less. He must become more. May your life be to others where they can see and look at you and see, there's the way. I can see through your life where's the way to Christ. And that's what he has for my life. I found hope in the desert when I see your life because in you I see the way, Jesus Christ. That's what the world must say when they look at you. Are we with one another? Way in the wilderness, streams in the wasteland. In the wasteland, you go with the stream of the Holy Spirit. If you cannot way, go with the stream of the Holy Spirit. You will be stuck, stuck in the wasteland and go and waste your life in the wasteland. But if you can get into the place where the Holy Spirit can speak, where the Holy Spirit can speak. Because what did we say about the past, my brother, my sister, that demon of, of judgment, that demon of unforgiveness, he's going to say, you are a, you see what you've done, you failed, you failed, you failed. That voice from other, you're going to make a mess of your life. 
You're not good enough. That guy that mocked you, that person that belittles you, those voices, those demons will remind you, remind you of the past. But the devil is only a copycat. The devil cannot think on his own. Where did he go, got the idea of reminding you about the past, reminding you about all the rubbish that happened in the past? He got it from the Bible, because the Bible said, he's saying that the Holy Spirit will come, and he will remind you of the words of Christ. He will remind you of the words of Christ, and he will explain it to you for the future. So there's a spirit that will remind you about your excellent times that you had with God. Your commitment, the day that you gave your life to Christ, your testimony through baptism, the, the times of brokenness in God's presence. He will remind you of quality, quality, quality decisions you made with God, the Holy Spirit. But at the same time, those other chokas, rabbis, will try to remind you about all the things that went wrong. You honor God and let the Holy Spirit remind you and build on that what he is reminding you of. But get the word inside. Otherwise, what must the Holy Spirit remind you of if you never take the words of Jesus? He will remind you of my words, the words of Jesus. But if you never get the words of Jesus in your heart, how can he remind you of anything? Only the devil can remind you of all the other rubbish of your past. Let's go. Now let's go. Revelation 12, 11. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives even much as to shrink from death. Hallelujah. What a translation. Okay. About your past. My brother and my sister, when you want to walk in victory, what is in your past? The blood of the Lamb. For what you did wrong, for what you did wrong, when you look back, if you really confessed it in that sense, take your forgiveness, unless you believe that your sin is greater than the sacrifice on the cross. If you believe that the sacrifice on the cross was so much far, more excellent than the greatness of your sin. If you respect the blood, then you take your forgiveness. But sometimes in my life, I don't know about you, sometimes you did something wrong and then it's like, sorry Lord, and then only after a week or two when you don't do it anymore, you know, don't get angry anymore for a week or two or three, it's like then only you settle your forgiveness. But you, like, it's as if you ask for forgiveness and you still have this guilty feeling. Now, asking for forgiveness is not a, a quick fix. It's not, I'm sorry, Lord, and I don't repent. No, it's going with repentance, eh? We all know that. It's going with repentance. But, my brother and my sister, if you want to walk ahead, if you want to overcome, even in the end time, this is revelation. This is in the context of a lot of rubbish where everything will be shaken. Heaven and earth be shaken because God wants to make everything new. Heaven, a new heaven, a new earth, a new Jerusalem coming from heaven. He made you new. So many things he will make new. Everything will be made new. But where is the new today? Today, the new is in your spirit. On this whole earth, where is the new? In the heart of the church. In your spirit. God made everything new. You're a new creation. Everything became new in your spirit, not in your soul. There's some we know as Christians. There's some huaras sometimes in our, in our soul. But in your spirit, eh, there's a freshness. And that new is not new yesterday and tomorrow it's stale. Tomorrow it is old. No, no, no. That newness in your spirit will forever and ever be fresh and new because it's the life of God. Now the, word, the Bible says, let the word of God dwell richly in your spirit. What does it mean? The voice of God is always fresh in your spirit. Remember we said, Holy Spirit testify in your spirit. Romans 8, hey? Good morning. Holy Spirit testify in your spirit. 
The word of God must dwell richly. That means he must dwell. If he must dwell, it's not just I remember it, but it's alive. The word found his home, his habitation in me. The word is living in me. Please. But the other voices can be so alive, you know. You could be in a place and then suddenly... Because you have that issue, suddenly when you start to talk about that person or about the situation, it's like that person coming alive. And it's like, and we call it anger. But many times it's just because that was the voice of that demon of bitterness or that demon of judgment or pointing the finger or criticism. is so alive. The word from that demon is so alive in you that you become intense. You become angry. You, you know, when you just... Talk about that person or talk about the situation. Let the word from hell not dwell richly in you. But let the word from heaven dwell richly in you. Amen. If you want to see at all a way and a river through the wilderness and the desert. By the word of their testimony. Blood of the Lamb, word of their testimony. Word of their testimony. When you open your mouth, there's a testimony. That doesn't mean you must talk about Christ the whole time. But there's a testimony because from your mouth there's truth. You live by truth. You live, you, you're getting into that situation. You're enjoying that soccer game in a right context. In a right context. Hello? You're not standing up preaching for everybody there. That's not what, what I, I'm saying. But what is coming from you, there's a testimony. And there's never not a testimony. Because the spirit of testimony, at the end of the day, Christ in you is the testimony. There's a testimony that I overcame. Because I'm more than a conqueror through him. There's a testimony that I'm saved because of Christ. There's a testimony there's a great future because of Christ. Because of him in your life, there's always, always, always a testimony. To testify about what can be. To encourage. And testimony is to encourage or there can be always a testimony. I just want to remind you, this is what you did. And that person got hurt because of you. And that person stumbled because you are the, were the stumbling block. And that person happened because you. And the devil will bring testimony. The aunt Lord funny brothers, the accuser of the brethren. He will come, the accuser. Well, come with testimony. I mean, what is the accuser doing? He believes he has some testimony against you. That is the bringing an accusation is, I come with authority. I come with a faith that you will, that it will be believed when I opened my mouth that this is what you've done. And maybe that is really what you've done. But there's a greater testimony that can be alive in you through the word of God, through the forgiveness of God. Oh, man. Let the word of God dwell in you richly here. Then you will overcome. In a time in the future, in the middle of a great biggest lot of hell and the rubbish. That's going to happen more and more on earth. You know? There's some, in that time, it could be that, and this angel just threw down this judgment thing. Just what I call it a thing. And a third of the earth is gone. This happened and a third of the earth is gone gone the population I told VIP I want to get freaky about this but you know today is possible with a with a pestilence with the type of wars in the second world war and the first world war it was not possible so intense that you know with the tanks and the and shooting one another yes 10 20 million how many 24 million people dead. But today, just press a few buttons. And we can, and more than a billion, two billion can disappear. Never mind 20 million. First, second war, world war is, a, is this against what can happen today. I'm just saying, anything is possible. But... The thing is, for some people in many nations, Christ will be life and die will be gain. Death will be gain. So it's not about praying that people will stay alive on earth. 
is praying about that people will be life in Christ. They will have life in Christ, either here or there, here or there. But the people, the nations will find life in Christ. Death can do nothing to them. They will just see more of life. How can you fear death? But fear the fact that you miss out on life here. Not fear, but you understand what I'm saying. Okay. They did not love their lives even unto death. That is what we are talking about. Death is gain. Like we say, the death of your flesh even today, that's profit, that's gain. Right, right, let's go. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Remove your lampstand. He's talking to the church. I will remove the light that the light that you have today. I will remove it that you will be totally deceived. I will remove the insight that I gave you because you're supposed to appreciate the word that you know. You're supposed to appreciate and value the insight that God has given you. But if I cannot value it and I cannot respond to the word in repentance and, and turn from that what is wrong in my life, and just get used to hear the word, but do nothing about it. Hear the word and do nothing about it. Then God, not the devil, can remove the lampstand. Because his revelation, that what he showed you. My brother, my sister was from a place of, rev of relationship. And his relationship is not cheap with you. He's not going to throw you in hell. But that relationship that is, I want to say with dignity. Can I say that? There's dignity in your relationship with God. And God is standing back. If you want to make it a mess. If you want to make it cheap. You want to make it cheap? That's your choice and God will stand back. He will not leave you. He will never leave you. Never forsake you. But you will not have that relationship with dignity. With your God. Oh man. God desire that. He don't want to, that lampstand to be removed. He wants his revelation. When he speaks. It's light in you. It's the lampstand. It's filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit. And he's bringing light. When he's speaking. Your father is speaking. There's light in the lampstand. That through your life. People will see. Because your life is like a lampstand. The church is like a lampstand. He's speaking to the church. Hallelujah. Consider how far you have fallen. That he's talking about, remember. Consider your ways in Haggai also. Many times. Five times in Haggai he says, consider your ways. There's certain things that you need to remember. He says, don't think of the former things. Forget about what happened. That is, when other voices are speaking to you about. The only voice that can speak to you about your past must be the Holy Spirit. Saying to you, that thing, that thing, that thing is holding you away from me. And then afterwards, he said, remember that who you are is because of God's grace. Because of nothing that you did right. So that is all about repent because you know and remember where you came from. That businessman, very successful, very successful. Remember where you came from. Remember that one scripture that says, remember that it was I that gave you the ability to gain wealth. It was I that you the ability to be successful, to be to make profit. He says to the rich man, remember, so that you will always know I have one thing to boast about, and that is the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I must remember, I go back, I go back, I go back, I go back, I see Christ on the cross. I go back, I go back, I go back, I go to the Garden of Eden. Humanity making a hell of a mess. And God says, he gave the promise. You will, yes, I'll say cop for morsel. You will crush his head. That will be Christ. Crush the head of the serpent. From the beginning, the promise was there. My brother, my sister, but I need to know. You need to know you better brag. If you cannot brag about the cross, what on earth are you bragging about? You're bragging about something else there. 
But if you want to start, start at the cross of Christ because that's the power of God unto salvation, the message of the cross. Power unto salvation, salvation for you to be saved from that rubbish, saved from the fear, saved from the hurt, saved from all that stuff, not just saved from hell going to heaven. But tomorrow, say from a day that at the end of the day you say, oh, hallelujah, the day's, I'm finished. <sighs> Luckily the day is over. Oh, training conference is finished. Hallelujah. Okay. And you had a waste of a week that you did without Christ. Okay. His mercies are new every morning. New. God wants to do something new but you bring the rubbish of the past into tomorrow his mercies you will not see that his mercies are new the freshness of the opportunity that he's giving you tomorrow while you are still alive on earth god's gonna help us amen next one hebrews 10 this is the covenant i will make with them after that time says the lord i will put my laws in their hearts and i will write them on their minds their sins and lawless act i will remember no more and whether I have been forgiven, sacrifice of sin is no longer necessary. This is a covenant. This is what I bind myself to with that lady, with that man, with that lady, with that man, with that lady. This is what I will bind myself to. I will put into their minds the way that I think, my laws. I will put in my, their hearts that they will see with their hearts what I see with my heart. For the nation, for their lives, for their family, for their future, for their business. I will put in them the capacity to see with their heart. To think the way that I think. It's still your decision. Then to allow what God is putting in your mind, what power God is putting in your heart. It's still your decision to go with it or not. But God says, my covenant with you, I bind myself. I promise you that I will do this. You get into my word. You get into my word and through my spirit, it will happen. You will think, start to think the way I think. You will hear what I'm saying. You will hear my heart in what I'm speaking. Just the laws in the mind. That's the devil. He can, he can bring every verse from the Bible. It is written, and the, and the dev, devil speak to you. It is written, it is written, it is written, and he can speak to you as long as you know the word in your mind, but not in your heart. The devil can speak to you, and it will, you will believe he's God. The temptation the devil brought to Jesus. It is written, it is written, it is written. And you don't understand the word, or you don't get further in the word. It's not this hard connection. You need to ask Holy Spirit. You know, God, you promised. You promised that you will write your laws in my heart and in my mind. I cannot just try to recite it. I, you know, I understand or I don't understand. I need to see your heart in it. I need to see your heart in it. God promised he will put it so in your heart that you will hear his heart when he speaks. Amen. That is his covenant with you. And if you allow him to do that, you will understand how your father has forgiven you and he made a choice. He's not a forgetful God. There's nothing wrong with his memory capacity. But he made a decision. I will never, ever remember what you've done wrong ever again. And you can talk about the past. What are you talking about? Father says. <laughs> Did you not respect my blood? The blood of my son. Did you, why don't you respect the blood of my son that has dealt with the past? Tomorrow is a new day. My brother, my sister, go with it for your life. Amen? Let's go. Next one. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in, everybody, remembrance. Remembrance. Let's try again. Remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. God gave you communion, my brother, to remember. To remember. 
to remember what he has done. Because if you can remember what he has done, you will have victory. So many people that partake in, uh, in communion in different places, and there's the power of God just manifesting. I bring into remembrance what God has done in this place. When you find a place where it's a lot of rubbish, when you get into a new business, when you buy a new house or whatever, don't make it freaky, but have communion in that place. I bring in this place into remembrance what God, Christ has done. Amen. We saw, and you know a lot of testimonies of people where demonic strongholds were broken just because of people taking partaking in communion. Not necessarily this 14 hours of spiritual warfare and screaming the devil out, but not that deliverance is, is wrong, not at all. But I'm saying the power of communion that God has given you. The Amplified says, do this as you affectionately remember me. So this remember is not like how hell and the devil and all the demons will remember the word. This is that you will remember we have a relationship. Communion because we have a relationship and remember the preciousness of our relationship through the blood. Then there's power in communion. This is about your past. This is about your future because of the blood. Past forgiven present breakthrough future you can enter with boldness to the throne of grace boldness to through the throne of grace amen hallelujah remember that next one but the advocate the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you we talked about this will remind you my brother and my sister god has given himself to remind you god has given himself and the one that will remind you, the memory, the memory from heaven is living in you. It's called the Holy Spirit. The memory from heaven is living in you. His name is the Holy Spirit. You get it in and the Holy Spirit will remind you. He's the memory capacity in you. God himself, the Holy Spirit. Ah, you take it today, please. Ah, please, man. And further, you have the Holy Spirit and you have communion. Holy Spirit and communion. And even I want to throw in baptism. Because baptism is also to remind you and to tell everybody there. And they can remind you of it. That I gave my life to Christ. I'm finished with the rubbish. I gave my life. And my, this baptism going through is to say the Egyptians are forsaked. They, they, are, they have drowned. And I'm going into a new lifestyle with God. I, hold, I call you to hold me accountable to this. And I give this testimony unto you. Baptism. God's going to help us all. Amen. Next one. We're not going to look into this, but everything about the new covenant, about the new heaven, the new earth, the new Jerusalem that will come from heaven. The new Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the, the, die Wohnplatz von Friede, the habitation of peace. The peace that has to do with relationship. New Jerusalem is God coming down and he's, he find his home with me and you. Our father's home. That's the new Jerusalem. Father having his home with you and me. Great. And then. Last one. Philippians 3 verse 14. I press on towards the goal. To win the prize. For which God has called me. Heavenward in Christ Jesus. This is translation from what Bible? NIV. Sure, you could have fooled me. Okay. I press on towards the goal. I press on. Some of the other translations also saying this one thing I'm sure of. Sivir? Oh, that's a donkey word. We cannot, uh, you have verse 13. Read quickly verse 13. Exactly how it is said. That's the difference with Afrikaans and English. I'm, I don't know who. Who did it right, who did it wrong. But it's not about right and wrong. But, uh, <laughs> but some verse 13s are 14s and verse 2 are 1 and uh, uh, something like that. Anybody? Hey, um, brethren, I do not count myself uh, to have a <laughs> 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 
you have your hands up, thank you. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those Done. things which are ahead. Yeah. One thing. I for? Forget. I for? I forget. Come, Adam. I forget. Yeah, and then? I made the decision. But for me to press towards the goal, I must first forget. I must first deal with the past. There must not be voices, Robbie's voices from the past. Otherwise, I cannot press on towards the goal. It's not possible. And you can try to press on towards the goal with a price which God has called you, heaven would in Christ Jesus. But if you ignore the past instead of dealing with the past, <sighs> But you're allowed to forget it if it's under the blood. If it's not under the blood and through the blood of Christ, that only through the blood of Christ that you can have victory. If you haven't dealt with the past, it will haunt you. It will haunt you all the way. All the way. But I, there's one thing. After he explained this whole thing in Philippians here, uh, Paul explains the whole thing of, I consider all things rubbish, I consider all things, some other translations is other words, also I, I count everything rubbish for the sake of to receive Christ to receive Christ, I'm not talking about I'm talking about things that are precious to you, I'm not talking about sin I consider all sin rubbish, that's obvious but there's things that I can cling to. There's things of my way of doing that I can cling to. My personality, my, I feel comfort. I feel comfortable in my way of doing. I feel comfortable according to my uh, personality. God knows my heart and he's using me according to the personality that he gave me. Who the, can I say who the hell? Uh, who the heaven told you that that is the personality you're supposed to have? It could be the personality based on your past and your circumstances and whatever happened in your life. And you are living something that's not from the heart of the Father. God is seeing you totally different than the way that you see yourself. And based on how you see yourself, you form a personality. May God set us free. But for me to press forward to the goal, for the price which God has called me, heaven would in Christ Jesus. I need to deal with the past. You need to deal with the past and the voices of the past. And the voices of the past. Okay? You all know this uh, testimony, just make it if you heard it before. And uh, dream about it. You can sleep now, those who heard it before. Um, so, this fear in my life that I want to just only stand uh, in the English class, I must, I must do the, what do you call it, monologue or something like that. And I say one, one sentence, and then I go and sit, and I get one out of ten. Yay! But I will rather get one out of ten instead of standing in front of people, because I have a fear I cannot stand in front of people. So in many ways, uh, many times I had to make a fool of myself, and even in the army, then in the army, God said, you will go to that song group. First of all, even in the army in uh, Kimberley, all the other things that happened that you I testified about, a lot of um, breakthroughs and people gave their lives to Christ. But at one stage, I was there with this march band, and there were all these guys, trumpets and trombones and E-flat horns and, and tubas and, you know, and all these, you know, march bands, you know, that kind of thing. And those South African march band going to come through and we're going to have a major thing for 75 years uh, festival of the army. And there's some songs and nobody can read music. And I'm just fresh, fresh, fresh in the, in the army still, still in basics. Germany! And some are starting basics. You're going to teach my band. Oh, I had not a lot of sleep in the night. Praying in tongues. And I had all these guys. Now you have the, it's a knolle, der knolle. You know, and then these guys, they make a, not a heaven of a mess, really a hell of a mess. And it's, and I must get them right because the South African march band is coming and it's going to be a whole stadium full of people and everything must be nice. Yeah, God in his love, using me according to my personality. Not at all, absolutely the opposite. 
Yo, God help me. In the front row, there were some guys. Hey, yeah, yeah, they would say, curse them. When, when, I'm trying, when I'm starting to get angry, they would say the swear words. Say, say, do have any, say. <laughs> naughty, not devil inspired, just plain naughty. But at the end of the day, God helped us. Oh, <laughs> it was only God that helped me there with a lot of stuff. And it was great, and God did a major thing. But my brother and my sister, God's going to put you in things, in situations. And if you are not put into situations that's challenging beyond your personality, just know that you are most probably not really walking with God. Because if God really wants to use you, he wants to make sure that he will get the glory and not you. And therefore, he will use you beyond yourself so that you cannot but say, it was only God. But if you don't want to walk with God and you want, don't want him to get all the glory, just let God use you according to your personality and where you feel safe and where you feel in control and where everything is understandable and where everything makes sense. That's okay. You're going to heaven. Don't have to give him all the glory here on earth. I mean, God sees your heart. <laughs> but if it's going to be about him, he will go beyond you so that you and people around you will say, that was not him, that was God. You will need guts for that lifestyle. But go for that. Because that is what the crown is all about. For the price. That's the price. Price is the opportunity that God will get the glory. The price, the honor that you have, that through your life people will see him. And that he alone will get the glory. The 24 elders before the throne, closest to the throne. The 24 elders on the thrones and with the crowns. To do what? To show the crowns. No. To fall from the thrones and to lay down the crowns before the Lamb of God. And say, worthy, worthy, worthy. Lord God Almighty, holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. That you have that awesome privilege. That whatever crown you will receive one day in heaven. It is that capacity in the fullness of what you could have done. And what you did, actually what you did on earth in his name. To just put it down before him at his feet and say, to you alone. To you alone, no worthy. Holy, holy, no one like you. Lord God Almighty. That is the price. And some of that price you can have tomorrow. And that is the price is the privilege. Let's say price is the privilege. The price is the privilege tomorrow. That he will get the glory and he alone. But then you need to get rid of yourself, your flesh. Get rid of your past, the voices. To get rid of the other voices. And God will help you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord, that we have that awesome privilege to honor you. And whatever opportunity you're giving us tomorrow, Lord, even in, in a crown that, that portray your beauty, when you crown us with your glory, Lord, that we will, we will never fall into the rubbish, into the trap of taking the glory for ourselves. Like Lucifer did in heaven. But God, tomorrow when you crown us with your glory. When you crown us with your beauty. That we will, through our lifestyles, that we will lay down and declare that it's all about you. That it's all about you. In what we study, in what where we work, where we dance, where we give class, where we do whatever we need to do. My God, help us to see the awesome privilege. And that the price... For what Christ has done on the cross, more than conquerors, so we can live tomorrow. Help us to see the privilege, Lord. But God, have mercy on us so that we understand. Your mercy, your practical help, Lord. So that we understand when you challenge us beyond our personality, challenge us beyond our capacity. That we will always remember it's because you alone want the glory. And you want to crown us. With your glory, so that we will declare that it is Christ and Christ alone. Thank you, Father, for that opportunity. Thank you for that privilege. Thank you that you trust us in such a way that you will believe that we will give you the glory. 
Thank you for your awesome faith in every man, every woman in this place. I honor you for that in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen, Amen, Amen.